Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? It is Thursday. It is swelteringly hot. So hot. I actually cannot paint today. Cannot paint. Have tried glazes. Have tried regular painting. Have tried substituting all water for flow improver. Nearly to the point where I'm I'm nearly drinking flow improver. I let the point out just to try and stay hydrated. Horrible, horrible cases of uh, swamp pits. You know, it's it's not good. It's not good. But seeing as how everyone is going to be talking about the weather, I thought we would talk about the weather as well. And so we're going to be doing some weathering. The puns will only get worse. So a couple of things before we get on with it. We have recently had a couple of polls for what marine and what necron we will be painting from the immense Indominus box that hopefully goes up for pre-order in about two weeks. When we get that box, we are doing two giveaways on release weekend. We'll do another giveaway just for people that are subscribed on YouTube. So if you want to win an entire box, just go to YouTube. Give us a sub, hit the bell button, all the usual bollocks. You could be in with a chance of winning one of those Indominus boxes just for doing that. Estimation point YouTube to get a link in Twitch or alternatively youtube.com forward slash Mohawk Miniatures as you would expect. Now for the people that are watching that giveaway stream, that raffle stream we're going to do on that release weekend, you guys have been trying to choose which out of the marine category we're going to paint. And the votes were pretty clear, we want the Judicia, the man with the chop sword of death, the man who's the highwayman. <laughs> Almost half of you that voted some would say exactly half of you that voted. Most would say that. <laughs> Did vote for Judicius. We're going to paint him. The next question, though, is what chapter should he be from? There are 13 on this list. It's going to be good. You can choose as many of these as you want. Whichever's got the most at the end. We'll go for it. Going to run this for about mm, a week and a half. So you've got plenty of time to get your votes in. Exclamation point J-U-D-I, Judy, in the stream. Go get your votes in. For the Necrons, unsurprisingly, less than half this time, did go for the Scorpeth Lord. There were more votes and there were a lot of you that troll voted for the plasma site. So, yeah. So we're gonna paint the Scorpeth Lord. We're gonna be giving away both of the painted minis, one to each of our two winners. Both winners will also get the rest of that faction's minis brand new on sprue. So now, of course, we need to know what dynasty should he be from? <laughs> and for these, we had to get a little bit inventive. <laughs> for this guy, score. S-K-O-R for score, Beth Lord. Exclamation point, score in the chat. Get your link. Head on over there. Give us a vote. Again, choose any one that you would like. We've got Sazakan, possibly. Sarakan, the new Krons. GW's brand new color scheme. We've got Sautek, the old Krons. And then I thought, fuck it, I don't know the names of any of these things. So you've got Lava Crons, Ice Crons, Old and Crusty Crons, a la Midwinter Minis, recently copied by Mikey. Bone Crons, a bit more like the ones I've been doing for Ben. Tabletop, tabletop Tactic Crons, TT Crons. The Nephrati Dynasty. Blue Crons, a straight up copy of Frozen's Crons. And then we've got <laughs> the Got fucked up at a 90s rave crons. 
which is Loz's paint scheme. The blue, purple, mostly glowy effect over black. Purple crons, red crons, hedonism bot crons. Fuck yeah, man. Nothing but gold and then pre-peeled grapes. And then I needed another one and all I could think of was giant robots. So we have Gypsy Danger from Pacific Rim crons. Why not, right? It's also white for the most part. So a very different kind of cron. So go there, estimation point score to get your votes in for that. Now though, we need to get on with this. So we're gonna do a lot of different weathering techniques tonight, assuming we have a chance. DK Knowles, of course you can. That's why I've got the swing vote. If everyone just votes for all of them, I vote for the one that I want to do, I get my way. So you could do that. It's a totally viable, possibly dumbass tactic, but it's a tactic. Let's see who we got in stream though. You got Voodoo Yaz, Fish, Deacon Oz, Rocky, Crown Blade, Big Brom, Hellboy. I need to put the rest of the, the rest, the, the last two streams aren't on YouTube yet. I need to do that. Uh, Viking, Dez, there we go, K Sauce, The Crooked Grin, Blue Eyed and Fury, I know your vote, I do know your vote, but your vote is throw like Cesaras in there as well, right? <laughs> so let's get on with it, we're going to start off by just spraying down some metallic, so we've got a spear to paint metallic, probably do that, silver, got some uh, Dark gold colors to do on things like this, uh, these bits, the halo thing, got some silver to do down his back, on the inside of the shield, and so on. Now most of that is going to get covered up by the next set of colors that we put down. We're just going to lay that on there now so it's less of a cover up to have to correct in a bit. Now we are going to be using the airbrush which means I'm going to roast my fucking feet. You report by my slacking on Monday. So firstly, Mike didn't want me to stream with him. Don't know why. I think it's just because he wanted to paint by himself. Because, you know, we show him up quite a lot. Uh, on Tuesday, if I'm honest, I was feeling fine and could have streamed. But it was so fucking hot on Tuesday. I, I, I'm No, I don't feel like it just don't feel like it. I'm just going to sit in the garage where I can open the doors both ends, have a nice through draft going, and uh, just sit and chill, smoke a stogie, drink a beer. Here we are. Tomorrow it's apparently 24 degrees, so I might actually be able to paint something again. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> right, starting off with the silver, just get these out of the way, nice and quick. Obviously the silver, we're going to weather by applying some rust effects to it. So let's get in here on this halberd thing that he's got going on. And again, we know most of this is going to get covered up when we start laying down our browns and things for our chipping underlayer. But as long as we're careful with those paints and don't just throw one over the place, all of this section, for instance, we've just saved ourselves having to paint by hand. Let's get these struts. Funny fish, your Ragnar. Nice, man. Very nice. Well, you could win a Ragnar this month. We've now revealed all three of the mystery prizes. Estimation point mystery for a bit more information, but this month the minis so far And I can't see there being more added, but we'll just throw out disclaimer in there for the sake of it But this month you have a choice of Ragnar Blackman The GC the Cult Abominant, the guy with the humongous sledgehammer of death Because what's not to love about that? 
that's just one of my favourite things ever. And then the mystery box. Do you guys want to see the mystery box again? Hurt us, what up? It's going to thunder like you tomorrow. It's going to walk up a hill and watch it all around the valley. Nice, mate. Don't take your brolly. You know, sit on top of a hill with that on. Maybe. Not uh, not so good. Prime Blade, you need some more material. As, as usual, in fact, you need some more material. Give him a nice silver element to his uh, I don't know, chess piece, whatever that will be. And anything else that we're going to do, silver. Nope. Cool. Let's flush that. Give the average a quick rinse. I mean, you're repetitive, so. <laughs> Right. Next up, scale color. We got some Viking gold. Yeah, but I'm allowed to be. It's my stream. I have to promote. That's different. You're not promoting shit. God damn it's war. <laughs> Eleven minutes into the stream, regretting this. These lights, bit war. Ugh. When you see me go super pale later on, it's not me changing colour at all. It's just the sweat and the lights bouncing off it, completely whiting out on the camera. Got my new slash first ever HS Ultra. Got to start somewhere that isn't eating all my monies. Fair. I hope you have fun with that airbrush, man. Right, let's do this eagle. See, we're just being careful, trying to avoid some of it hitting the uh, silver there. We know we're going to have to clean it up later on, so it's not the end of the world if it does. But let's just lay these colours down nicely. Let's also hit his shoulder pad trim. Because if we can retain a lot of this, it means we can also do some crisp airbrush highlights on that later on. Let's hit this big old shoulder pad insignia thing, whatever that's all about. Get the underside, obviously. Same deal on the inside as well, let's not forget about that. No, you did. And then this side. So I think we finally figured out how to film because that actually looks gold on the camera. The rest of it looks silver. None of this looks blue, and I hope, I really hope, that things like this do look blue, and things like this do look mostly green. Uh, still slightly blue. Fuck. I thought we figured it out. Does this look green? It looks green. That's kind of close enough. <laughs> For today, that's as good as we got. Oh, how am I, mate? I, I am... Uh, ever so slightly sweaty as is I imagine everybody watching the stream so it is what it is we'll all get through it it's not by any stretch the hottest day most of us have ever lived through let's be honest so can't see a problem with this not really it's just a bit uncomfortable Looks amazing. All I've done is fucking... Well, actually, to be fair, it, it, the quality is so much better than the old camera. We spent all of the weekend learning how to use the brand new camera setup. Uh, and then when I was sat chilling Monday, I started learning how to take uh, photos with it. Uh, I've got a few issues with it. I'm gonna hopefully try and get sorted out very soon. The battery seems to last literally no time. So it gets a full charge, the battery sits in the camera, gets a full charge on it, uh, and then somehow instantly dies. Uh, which I can't work out. Why at all? 
Right, any more bits? A lot of this, obviously. So let's just hit these now. This will get covered up. Pretty much all of it, but... I've got some gold paint in the air rush, so we may as well, just in case. Anything else? No, I think we've got pretty much all that. Cool beans. So let's flush all that through. And then, want to paint some brown. Might need a medic to remove my rods. Wait, what? <laughs> please, please explain. Uh, Oddity UK, new camera. This one is now a actual camera camera. Uh, it is a Panasonic Lumix GX80. 85, 80. One of the two. Numbers. Uh, Rocky says, I'm working on the base of the Fortra or Dawn man. I need a good substitute for pigment. What color chalk best mimics rusty like dirt? Brown and orange? Uh, do a mix, I guess. Other than that. Like, I don't know the names of chalk. I just know, I know everything by colors. I don't know the names of some of the paints I use. I just know them by colors, so. Normally people ask me, oh, how do you paint bone? Well, you start with brown and work up to, well, bone and then a little bit of white. That, that's my recipe for things. Just, here's the color. Uh, oh, right. That that makes sense, Pearl Jam. Okie doke. <laughs> Got swamp pass going on then. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Rock. I can't be much more help than that, I'm afraid, but... I don't know any other way to answer that question. Okay, so now I'm going to spray everything brown. The reason I'm going to spray everything brown is because this is going to be the paint shows through our chipping layer. So I'm going to try and avoid all the bits of silver and all the bits of gold, but we know we're going to get some overspray on those. It literally does not matter one bit. If we avoid it, great because it means that we've saved a lot of time so we're going to do a lot of things like turning this guy around just making sure we're not hitting too much overspray onto things like the silver but because we're going to be weathering the living crap out of this any bits of brown that end up on silver we can help masquerade in there as part of the grime the dirt dust rust all those sorts of things any bits that go on the gold will probably just blend into the shading so we've chosen our colors kind of carefully for this first set the next bit which is when we'll actually paint this uh, statue the color we want it to be which is gonna be a really nice bright bluey green <laughs> you, you, you put down your huevos mate not not <laughs> not around there <laughs> Uh, any ideas for an undivided colour scheme, like Chaos Undivided? Uh, Oddity, that's a good point. I haven't checked the firmware. My thoughts is that it's, it's possibly a, just a, a duff battery. Like, I've got one that is, is no good. Um, but we're going to persevere with it for a little bit and, and see. But when I got the camera, the battery came uncharged. I let the camera sit on charge overnight. Resisted the urge to play with it. Just let it sit on charge overnight because that way the battery got its absolute maximum charge. Um, so we're not like ruining the elasticity or whatever of the battery and all that kind of stuff. And I was really hoping that we wouldn't have any issues, but obviously we've just got this one. Like, the the battery shouldn't run down when it's not in the camera. So it was on, it got a full charge. I took it out of the camera, stored it in the drawer, put it back in the camera, trying to take some photos with, and it's, it's nearly dead. I don't get it. 
Uh, Salvaris, first time here this weekend. How'd it go in the end? There is a fully painted Noble Demon army right above my Moe. Just there. Got it all done. Was up till 5 a.m. Streaming on Monday morning slash Sunday night. And then went outside, put the army out on the table because, let's be honest here, fucking sunlight is the absolute best thing to take some photos in and the dawn was beautiful i missed the actual sunrise bit missed that but beautiful blue skies bright sunshine it was fucking glorious on monday morning so chuck the armies on the table did a quick insta video uh, just try to keep everyone updated because I know there's a few people tuning in from there throughout the weekend which is super awesome but my god what a fucking challenge it's going to be a while before we try doing something like that again uh, but I did enjoy it perversely it was it was hard, like, physically it was hard my back was absolutely wrecked God, it was stiff as fuck. Um, but to be honest, it was a buzz. It was great. You guys absolutely rocked. We painted our mohawk yellow. That was fun. Uh, I still haven't sent out any of the prizes yet. Monday and Tuesday, I didn't really leave the house. Well, I didn't leave the house at all, in fact. Uh... Wednesday, I, yesterday, I ended up with a lot of work stuff to do. So we had, just had a couple of days off, therefore there was a lot to catch up with. So my lunch break was basically me working. Um, the job that I do, whilst I love it, is very full on at times. Uh, and we've got a couple of releases coming up, which just sort of needed to be on, essentially. Um, and then today, again, it's been somewhat more of the same. Lots of meetings for lunch break was kind of getting a lot of other shit done. So, hey ho. Yeah, just before three, watch the rest. Monday morning, had a couple of big raids late on. Yeah, we did, man. We did. That was that was cool. Uh, next to me, I'm at Grey Knights or Custodes, Airbrush and Metals, Wash and Win. Right, firstly, have you seen the Custodes I've painted? Nothing even close to, to, to that process. And the Grey Knight army that I've got that's currently being built and should be finished real soon by Hobo J. It's all non-metallic metal. So, fuck that noise. <laughs> Fair enough, I, I missed that message, to be honest. It, we're getting a little bit more uh, people in the chat. It's getting harder to keep up with things, so it might be worth just, like, adding me in the message now. Um... I'm normally pretty good at it in keeping the, the chat going and answering people, but I know recently it's been a lot harder. I don't want you guys to feel like I'm ignoring you because that's the last thing I want. Right, let's get Lefas all the inside of his herd. Getting around there. Still got the inside of the shoulder pad. Oh, gonna get off. The inside of the shoulder feel today. And then we can do the next thing, which is kind of fun, which is to get some chipping fluid on. Now, what you should probably do, because of how heavy we're gonna be with the. Uh, oh, dude, thank you for that sub! Much appreciated, dude. Um, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go without gloss varnish. And we're just going to be a little bit more careful than we would normally do. Uh, if we do get any bits of the primer showing through, that's just really dark weathering. Like, this is a bit of a sort of introductory guide to... So, some of these techniques you'll want to use. Some of them... We'll point out some other bits that you can do, but we'll try and get a lot done today. So 
So we're just shading in these areas, trying to leave off as much of the trim as possible, but again, we know we're gonna hit plenty of it. It's gonna be really evident when we start throwing some greens down on this as well. Get that base coat down. We all good. So has anyone in the chat used chipping fluid or similar weathering techniques before? Because they're a lot of fun. You've seen me do a lot of painting of battle damage recently, so on the Imperial Fist. Uh, and we started doing it a little bit on that Stormcast dude for Shade Spire. Right, there we go. Very dull, very brown. Make sure we don't skimp on those. Happy days. Uh, Jason made a bet about 3.5. I did. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, Hellboy, it, I was very impressed with that. I thought it was just mentalness, though. Like, people were just staying in to see at what point I'd actually break. We were close for some of it, but, you know. It was epic, though. Fucking epic. Flash and Dash, what up, dude? And Lordy, how's it going? Uh, better than you, nap times at work and it's been hours to clean out a new garage. Talk about Water Spider. Brilliant. Brilliant. To be fair, I did absolutely tear the garage apart a couple of weeks ago. Um, took everything out of the garage, hoovered the garage, just so that's where I could set it up for my. Uh, my little stogie area. Mr. Brutal, how you doing? Right. Here we go. I did like your picture out in the garden of the sunrise. It, it was good, man. It was good. What did he ask you about airbrush shitting sort of center? It's what chip fluid is. Okay. So Salvirus, uh, definitely don't use GW Metallics for an airbrush. People will tell you they can, and that they have, and they've done it with no problems. I don't do it, because they're shit. They're total, total, total shit. Um, the metallic fleck is slightly too large for most everyone to take. It clogs. It, it ain't good. Chipping fluid, though. Let's, let's have a quick chat about this. It pongs. It's, it's kind of one of those like smelly hobby um, things. Basically, what this is going to do is it's going to put down a layer that can be activated by moisture. And what that layer will do is it will form a barrier between this brown paint that we've got down and then, although I just realized we missed a little bit on top. So no weathering the very top of this shoulder. That's what we've got to remember. Uh, and then when you reactivate it with water, the paint that's on top of it will sit on this layer. This layer will then dissolve and turn to water when you just knock it. And that paint will be pulled away. So you'll be able to see the base color underneath the color of paint that you've laid down. So if you've got, for instance, a brown paint job underneath, like this, and then you put, for instance, some green on top of it, when you reactivate this by spraying water at the model and then get something and just gently sort of attack the paint you're gonna see brown come through under the green it gives a very very realistic weathering effect because the effect you're getting is 3d so let's just chuck a load of that in the air rush hopefully that'll be enough and I'm gonna give the whole thing a pretty liberal spray Smelly hobby thing is, is not very specific. You're absolutely right. Why not just use salt? Because I don't like salt weathering. Um, this way is quicker, I think. And this way you've got a bit more control over as well. So you could use salt. Salt weathering is another technique. And we've seen that in the whip gallery once or twice. Noticeably on some Nurgle tanks. 
And salt weathering is where you basically can spray the model with something like hairspray. That's a good product. Once your hairspray is on there, it's kind of tacky. You then absolutely chuck a load of salt all at it. And you can use any kind of salt. I've seen people using the gigantic grains of salt that look like stone. I've seen people using normal everyday sea salt. That was totally not enough. But that's one of the ways that you can do it. You then chuck down your paint on top of that. The salt gets in the way. You put water on your mini. That helps to brush the salt off. I'll tell you what, there's fucking Thai people out there that need some water thrown on them after today. Um, and there you go, you've left yourself holes in the paint, the coat, the coat of paint that you've applied over the top, shows through as weathering. What it does mean is that like any stencil, you can end up with just a load of fuzzy edges, and I don't like that. If you think about it, if something's been scratched and torn and broken and, and everything else, all the other sort of describing words that we could use for something that's been weathered, soft edges is not one of them that you choose, is it? Would you paint the base coats with gloss? Crooked grin? Quite frequently, I would, but we're going to try and get this guy done fast. So as a result, we're going to be slightly less abrasive with any of our methods that we use to remove some of that top coat of paint. Once we've got all of the weathering done, the chipping part of it at least, then we're gonna gloss the model to stop any of the chipping fluid reacting when we put something else down on top. So I'm doing two coats of gloss, we just do the one. Uh, what we're using now, this is chipping fluid. This is the scale color, heavy fuerte. Chipping fluid. Comrade Sun, what up, dude? Wouldn't the salt look more random? Well, yes and no. Like, you've got to place the salt on the model. Now, admittedly, you could just chuck salt at the model if you wanted to. But otherwise, you're placing salt on there, in which case, no, it's not going to look random because you're placing it. And if you choose to place it without a pattern, then you can choose to do the weathering without a pattern. It's a skill that I learned when I was a chef something that is very very important to anyone that works in a kitchen especially one that does fine dining food is the ability to plate things up so that they don't look organized but still obviously you've had to place them on there without throwing them on any old way shape or form so you can't create something that is truly random but you can give it the appearance of randomness like i said if you're using salt and you're just chucking it at the mini cool that that's all good i guess but you're probably not are you Fuck, wait. oh yeah yeah <laughs> he said pass like, what the hell is he talking about yeah no i've been head chef at places but most of the time i was spent doing uh like chef de partie where you're in charge of a section which means that you still play you just don't it's not the final sort of check. Somebody else has a look. Oh, dear Lord, so thirsty. Right, hair dry time. Dry that bang. Because if it wasn't hot enough in here. If you cook fast food, you're not a fucking chef. I stand by that.
<laughs> Holy shit. Uh, it's, it's just gone up by about a thousand degrees in here. Good lord. Good lord. Uh. Barnes, absolutely, man. Like, it's not cooking when you throw some burgers in a thing, press a button, and when it beeps, they're done. That, that's not cooking. You're about as fucking qualified as Chef Mike at that point. And if anyone here knows what Chef Mike is, you've either watched way too much cooking TV or you worked in a kitchen. Right, let's start out with. Should we do green? Let's let's do this kind. This is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go green, and then we're gonna go super blue. Both, yeah. Aircon for Jay. The fucking doors are open. That's all the aircon we need, man. <laughs> oh, worked in the spoons kitchen. My ex-wife worked in the spoons kitchen. <laughs> I did all the food. At home, I did all the food. Chef Mike, fastest chef in the back. Yeah, man. Chef Mike makes fucking banging scrambled eggs. <laughs> Need that defrosted? Chef Mike will do that for you. Don't you worry. Oh. Fuck me. This is crazy. Right, let's see if we have worked out the light balance for this. Hopefully this doesn't come out like blue. Uh, let's do that red, because why not? Let's, let's make our lives harder and do that red. Chef Mike makes the most of your pasta at change too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, enjoyed that lasagna at Spoons. Chef Mike cooked that. Bit to better Italia recently and anything that wasn't pizza. Chef Mike cooked that. actually coming out pretty close to the colour it's meant to be, so we're good. Damn, that's a nice bright green. I worked in my nan's pub. Okay, you weren't a chief. Like, I... Definitely, definitely weren't a chief. Like, unless in your nan's kitchen it was Tex-Mex and they made you wear a headdress. At that point, maybe you were a chief. Seven chef mics. Mate, the last place I worked at, the last kitchen I worked at, had one chef mic. And you had to plug it in when you wanted to use it and get it out of a cupboard. We did not... In fact, the only thing I ever did in my entire time there, using Chef Mike, was warm-up sauce for sticky toffee puddings. That was it. Job title was Kitchen Bitch. Dude. Absolutely. But Kitchen Bitch is one of the funniest jobs you can have in a kitchen. Especially if the chefs like you. Like kitchen bitch or commie chef. Fuck me, you get anything if you get on well with a chef. Part of me wishes I'd never gone past commie in any kitchen I'd ever worked in. Because if you help the chefs strain their stocks and if you make sure they've always got pans and drinks and everything else. So yes, actually being the kitchen bitch if you do all of that, any time there's food left over, oh, we got a bit of steak that we didn't sell tonight, do you want it? Yes, mate, that'd be great. Mmm. <laughs> Captain Wombore, what the fuck is Chef Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Chef Mike's a microwave. I, I, <laughs> The first time I ever heard it was in some 
kind of chain-ish restaurant, uh, which unfortunately was Raymond Blanc's Le Petit Blanc. I was, I say going out because it's classier than what was actually happening, uh, but I was going out with one of the girls that ran the bistro, and one day all their chefs just fucking phoned it in. Like the owner apparently was a bell end, which is what caused it all. But not owner, the, the manager. Um, and so all the chefs just fight, just decided, no, fuck it, we've had enough. We're, we're not coming into work. So they scrabbled around asking anyone that had mates that were a chef that could come in. So I'm like, okay, I'm not classically French trained or anything because that was never really what I was into and didn't go to chef school. But sure, I can do most of the stuff on this menu, I reckon. Fucking rock up and everything is Chef Mike. Everything is Chef Mike. All you do in that place is plate everything and charge 25 quid a head. Absolute bullshit. You had zero chef bike? Yeah. Honestly, mate, self taught chefs understand a bit more about what's going on. They haven't been brainwashed, they've had to learn it. So you had to learn it on the job from another chef. And I'm not knocking anyone that ever went to catering school, culinary college. You know, got your cordon bleu going on or any of that sort of stuff. If you manage to do all that, then you guys absolutely rock. But for those of us that didn't, you either have to be awake while you're on the job at all times to be able to learn, or you have to finish the job, go up, and then do some cooking to work out what the fuck you've, you've done today. So I did a lot of that. Meant that for, for some seasons I ate a lot of things like mackerel and um, a lot of foraged food as well because I need to work out exactly how it, it changed on different ways that I cooked it. I did about a billion different fucking dishes with uh, wild garlic in. Put it into pesto, make salads out of it, tempura the flowers. Uh, fuck, what else? Uh, wild garlic arancini. Mmm. 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 Mm. My god, I'd kill for a plate of that right now. That, that shit's super good. With some proper mozzarella. None of this supermarket crap. Right, nearly done on the green. Got a few bits to touch up here and there. But then, we're going to get some quick highlights down. Then we can start. Oh, I did a red. Highlight that, and now we'll do the shipping. What time are we on? Quarter ten. Cool. Should have all the all of the base colours down and be ready to chip by ten. That's the goal. Arancini is fucking this level, mate. I love that. We used to make risotto, or risotto, just to make arancini. Oh, God. For those of you who don't know what arancini is, you make a risotto, like I just said. You let it cool, and then you compress it into balls. So you make, like, little bonbon of uh, risotto. Normally, with a piece, a tiny tiny piece of mozzarella just sort of tucked in the middle and you form it around that and you pan it which is the correct term for saying roll it in breadcrumbs and stuff get it in some panko breadcrumbs so it's super crisp and you deep fry them to serve my fucking god oh it's all the carbs and a fuckload of fat but my word that is that is super super tight Used to do wild garlic arancini with some uh, proper homemade pesto. 
tiny little bit of salad, maybe some uh, sweet pickled red onion or something to help cut through some of the richness of it, clean it a little bit. So clutch. Right, is that all green? We got all inside his hood. Yeah, pretty much. Just give it another go just in case. Groovy. So you got a nice bright, rusty looking green colour anyway. Bang in. Let's flush this tight, get some red going on. It's weird, I never heard about the phrase chef might but immediately we're talking about. That's because you're a legend, crooked grin. Uh Rojo. Let's let's fuck around with some of this today. We're gonna use some of this Kador red base, see what's going on with that. And we need darker red. Let's just chuck a little black in it this time round. Work with that. See what we can get out of this colour. Where to what scale 75 from in the UK? Estimation point element, my friend. Get yourself over there. I get all my scale 75 paints uh, and pretty much all my P3 paints uh, from there because my local stockists don't stock any of those. Uh, in fact, another one of my local stocks just dropped Vallejo from their range. Uh, in favour of MIG. So, there you go. Right. Pretty much Element gets all my business right now. Well, I did spend some time on the phone today with the guys over at KR Multicase and speaking to Battle Foam as well, trying to organise some cases for my Imperial Knights. And uh, Battle Foam will do a solution that kind of barely works. Uh, but KR will do a solution that absolutely nails it for what I want it to do. So I just need to wait for the case I want to come back in stock, which should be within the next sort of week or two, and a boom. Flight size attache case for the Knights. Totally didn't smash that light in. You recommend an A case? Yeah, I've looked at them, man, but my god. My God! So A case were um, they had a different name originally. They kickstart to a different name, and they do magnetic cases, and they look sick. They look super sick. They got a load of pull-out drawers. I can easily get one that is the exact um, size and sort of dimension of the easy jet luggage restriction for your carry-on. Exact. All right, sweet. So look at this. Holy fucking shit, it's 270 quid. I'm sure it's amazing, but at 270 quid, I needed to tickle my huevos a little bit as well. It's, it's the biggest magnetic case you can get, but all I need is to be able to transport four knights. I say all I need. That's quite a struggle, apparently. Right, the reason we're doing the red rather than going on with the highlight color for the green is because the green is the most prominent color on here. And I'd rather have to fix a little bit of overspray on this with some extra chipping that we'll throw in for good measure. Uh, or just put in a little bit more red if I need to for a, a highlight than try and fix the green. So we're gonna do all of this bit first, then we're gonna spray the green so any overspray we get around here, especially around the hand, very, very easy to tidy up using the airbrush to highlight that. So as we've said before, a lot of times when you're approaching a project, having a solid plan is gonna save you Fuck ton of work. So get that plan. Get that plan. Alright, I'm gonna get the hairdryer and give that a quick blast because clearly it's not hot enough. Should we do his shoulders red? Instead of green? No. Meh. Nah. nah. 200 quid, you can just buy their own plane ticket. Yeah, exactly, right? 
Mate, I travel on EasyJet. I, I, I've got several trips for that. And it stops me having somebody sat next to me that takes up more than their seat. You know? It saved me some baggage costs. This is their ticket. You know, they, they have... Hmm. Mate, I've even thought about just buying a pram. Cheaper than that, get a push chair. Yeah, these are my babies. Get some weird looks. It's fine. I'm used to those. But yeah, the KR case is literally half that price. So, it's kind of one of them, isn't it? Right. You see the 40k Marvel comic book cover? Yes, I did. I desperately want it. I'm not fussed about reading the story of Marnie's Calgar at all. But I kind of do want that. I just do. Just do. Daddy Tubbs, what up? <sighs> Fuck it, let's just wet blend. It's too hot for the hairdryer. So you can get all around the centre. Gonna get all of that little bit of battle damage around the edges of there. You know, leave a nice little recess around the sides, a little bit of a recess around the skull and stuff like that. So we're just hitting the larger, flatter areas. A little bit of colouring in. I'm not fussed about getting a full coat on there we want to get a little bit of contrast that's looking extremely orange but I bet it won't if I do that on both of these lights and then I bet this will go blue look, look at there's my arm damn that's 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 too bright actually but it, it still looks orange that didn't work at all still still learning how to use the camera obviously Uh, I've got six of the card ones, always less protection than you get in the bottom of the car. Phone is bang on though. I've seen one of their card ones here, like the next commission I've got, which is some uh, all planes for Aeronautica Imperialis. Uh, I've been sent in one with the foam that's been been attacked by moths again. Look, go away. That's not on my water bottle, you burk. Um, yeah, and that's, that's what made me think, you know, th this is a quality product. And they do have one that's a cut out for an Imperial Knight. I will need to just trim them a little bit more because my knights have their own scenery that goes with them. Uh, but it also leaves a bit of room for just the extra things like books, dice, tape measures, all that sort of guff that's going to go in there and all. Alright, let's grab some of this now. I've just recently bought this Caribbean Blue from Scale really looking forward mate the chaos site is super confusing the guy I spoke to on the phone right here's something that will catch you out every time it nearly caught me out there I stopped myself just in case just before scale color paints for whatever reason they seal the inside of the cap like I don't know why but there's a little plastic seal on there I'm assuming to stop tampering and stuff but just pierce that otherwise you'll be sat there for ages wondering why your paint's not coming out yeah I spoke to the uh, the KR rep and I was like look please don't take this the wrong way but I cannot for the life of me understand your website uh, I just need some help I need to know how many of these go in there and what that can actually fit and what it means why do your faces always look busted? Um, what are you using as inspiration, Rock? Because, like, don't use this one. Just, just, just don't. Uh, weapons on or off? Yeah, we're gonna be on with the weapons off. Low night. Yeah, 
because the weapons are flowed out. I've got magnetized knights anyway, so that doesn't bother me. Um, oh wow, that's the chalkiest thing I've ever seen right now. It's all flow improvement there. Brother, the ones that I normally use are Tabletop Tyrant. I totally love their cases. The downside is... Brilliant. Chimo, what up, brother? Three months, man. Thanks a lot, dude. The, uh, the Tabletop Tyrant, Tyrant case, which is the one that currently carries all my knights, fits four knights. And it fits all of their weapons being taken off and everything else. Absolutely spot on. Can't complain. Know what it doesn't fit? EasyJet's fucking allowances for your stuff. That's what it doesn't fit. Right, that's better. So you're going to get a lot of the areas around the front of the mini. Get things like hands. Especially around the knuckle lines. Look towards the edge of the fingers there, just because we got some red on it. You've got red on you, mate. Again, not too fast about getting some of this on the red. That's easy to fix. We just weather the fuck out of that bit. Job done, right? Otherwise, let's go for somewhat of a zenith. Or so we'll hit some of the braces, a little bit of that, some of this. And kind of just hit the tops on everything. Shoulder pad. Working up around the top. Uh, I can't for the love of space you fear out chaos site. Like, yeah, I know, mate, it's, it's tough. It's real tough. That's why I phoned them up. It was easier. The rep knew what he was talking about, though. Like, he absolutely understood every part of the box. Uh, every part of the trays, he understood the army that I was playing and wanted to take. Um, even to the point where it's like, okay, cool, are the arms detachable or just the weapons? I'm like, damn, this, this guy knows his shit. So, so I'd recommend just give him a call. It's, there's a free phone number for the UK. Um, alternatively, just drop him an email say, look, this is what I want. What option do I need? Tell me the boxes I need to tick. Right, just going to hit some of these creases. So obviously try and stay kind of tight to what you're doing. Otherwise you must just spray the entire bloody thing that colour and that kind of defines the point. Here we go, we've got a super bright green dude. Make sure we get this side as well. Stop it from looking so flat. Again, just hit the creases. Just get the edges. These bits. There you go. Right, we've got brighter green, some slightly darker greens shown in there. Flush the airbrush out. Now we need to clean the airbrush, not like a full disassemble and clean, but the next thing I'm going to do is spray this guy with water. Flat out. Just water. Definitely weathering, man. Everyone's talking about the weather. May as well do some weathering. Solway Studios in the house. Give this man some love, everyone. Love this guy. Give him a shout out. Give him some hype. How you doing, brother? So there you go, all weathered. That's a rusty statue. Done. Next. Swear your tits, mate. Mate. 
Oh, we got some uh, coddled eggs right now. This is not good. <laughs> Everyone, if you don't follow Solway, what's wrong with you? Right, again, because it's not hot enough already. We need to not hair dry that in my lap as well. So this feels kind of counterproductive. We're drying it down right now. And in a minute, I'm going to spray water all over it. Hair dryer tonight. Yeah, baby! That's, that's why we've got water in the airbrush. Just give it a quick... Oh, 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 that's, that's actually beautiful. Anyone's got an airbrush? This is why you buy an airbrush. Oh. I feel like in one of those L'Oreal commercials. Oh my God, that's actually glorious. Oh, whew, God, that's so good. 30 reasons to buy an airbrush. Number 17 will surprise you. So, oh wow, that was so nice. So now we're gonna spray this guy with water. Now we're working bits. So there's no point in activating all of the chipping fluid at once because in this heat, it will stop being chipping fluid. So before we do that, let's get ready to rock. I've got, as always, some brushes that are completely and the crappy um, synthetic ones, I'm trying to think of the word that is completely spaced on it. So here is crappy synthetic brush. As you can see, we've once used it for weathering. That's totally fine. This is brown. The bit underneath here is brown. Here you go. Doesn't work for yours, your compressor's asthmatic. What extra commands for? Well, why don't you type them? Find out, man. Everyone should definitely check out Judy and Score. You should all check out YouTube, but I know most of you guys already have, so yeah, appreciate it. Right, let's do the shield. So we've got red, happy days. Now let's spray it with water. So now we've just got a wet shield. That's it, that's all we got. That'll do. Make sure it's nice and damp. Must make sure of that. Just let that work for a little bit. It's gonna start activating the chipping fluid that's underneath the paint. And sometimes you'll be able to see it. Like you may be able to see this on camera if we zoom right in. What I am gonna do is just make this ever so slightly darker. There you go. Just so that stands out a little bit more, makes it a little easier to see. Color balance is still good, it's just slightly darker. You can just about see up here a little bit of texture forming. And that is where the chipping fluid is activating. Just starting to come loose from the brown that we put down underneath this. Which means that red is now going to be starting to float on paint that doesn't actually exist anymore. So now we'll take our brush and we'll start off being super careful. So just dabbing at the mini, see how far we get. Then we'll start to use a little bit more force. What we're looking to do is just brush away some of that red paint. Just wet this up even more. Oh, don't tell me it's too fucking hot to do weathering effects. There you are. See, as we rub away at this, we're starting to get straight through to that under layer of that brown paint. And then you just kind of pick and choose where you want to do some, some weathering. Make sure you leave plenty of brighter areas because otherwise you'll end up with something that's just totally torn apart and you won't actually 
have done any chipping, what you'll have done is just remove the entire top coat of paint. Now if your brush isn't working, so mine's not doing so great right now, toothpick. So it's got a bit more scratch to it. Now be careful, obviously, you're going to start pulling away any of the paint that's on the top surface, exposing some of the browns that we've got on there. But if you go too far, you'll remove everything you've got on there. Now we didn't gloss varnish this guy, just to try and make sure that we get plenty of work done tonight. So we do need to be pretty careful. But let's free up a little bit with the toothpick, go back in with the brush, sort of gently start moving some of this around. Scrapey, scrapey. Next thing you know, you've got weathering. Now you can use almost any kind of abrasive tool for this. I frequently have done this with the uh, little airbrush cleaning uh, um, dental brushes that I've got. They work really well. They are kind of aggressive. You can use just a toothbrush. So if you say you've got a large area to, to do, you can just use this and go kind of ham. At that point, we went way too far. We ended up with the green showing through. So what we need to do now is remove the green from the brown. Just by brushing away at this. Like so. There you go. And then a couple of spots down there, so to take the green out. Of course, we forgot when we decided at the last minute to paint the shield red that we put the green down. So, don't do that. Have a plan. Stick to the plan. Don't, don't fucking improvise like we did. There's some weathering on that. Anywhere that's green, we just come back in with a brush and just pick it up. Easy peasy. Can you do this by hand or is it airbrush only? Uh, if you're gonna do it by hand, you may as well just paint the weathering on, similar to how you've seen me do it with like the Imperial Fist and so on and so forth, right? Because at that point, you're gonna be doing it that way anyway, and that gives you a very realistic sort of 3D effect, but you're in a little bit more control Obviously, we've got a completely submerged bit down here, so we just be careful in there. Bit of tissue. Let's try that off. And there is our weathered red shield. Obviously, that part doesn't look good because we've got the, the green, but we can fix that later on. Let's just work this section. So, again, just spread a little water down. Leave that a minute to activate the chippy fluid, and then away we go. Yeah, that's right. So what's always said is pretty spot on as usual. So that that's why I would just paint on battle damage. Rocky, peace out man. So we'll start off with this. Hey Rocky giving Soulware up. There you go, Mr. Studios. Get some of that off of that. Let me just give you your meeps. So, Solway, you're now eligible 
for the giveaways. First one being the mystery giveaway. Exclamation point mystery. So it's studios. There you go, dude. Those will be on the last day of the month, Tuesday the 30th. So coming up real soon now. Now you can see this is working much, much, much better where we're getting rid of some of that initial top cut green as well as the highlight. And we've got a pretty scarred surface we're going to be working on. So you can obviously imagine that the most weathered parts of a mini will be any of the edges certainly anything that comes around like constructing parts like here we've got rivets and bolts and all that sort of jazz going on anything around the bottoms of stuff so around the lowest part of this road that's where things may have brushed up against it if you're doing a tank you can imagine anything around tracks uh, anything around moving parts of the vehicle, so turrets, um, anything like that essentially. These are all good places to do a bit of weathering. So let's just attack this a little bit more. And then let's say we want it to do something slightly different with our weathering. We can just add in some scratches. So let's just dry that down a little, make it easier for you guys to see. Notice how we're just on and off with this. We're not wiping away it, otherwise you will literally move the entire top panel of paint. So you see loads of very quick and easy ways to weather something. But let's keep going. You could even attack it with the wrong end of the brush if you want, but be super careful doing stuff like that because you're most likely to break through to the undercoat uh, or just bare plastic if you do. Obviously, you don't need to do every single part of every surface, so on and so forth, just where you like the look of it. So if you look at that side, obviously super clean, super weathered, and you just sort of keep working. So we're going to try and get all of this done very quickly. So we're not going to take too much care, it's just to show you the technique essentially more than anything else. Let's get into all of that area. Because I want to also show you how to do some good rust effects in a very simple fashion. We use some weathering powders for those. Some um, dirt in terms of things like uh, dripping. liquids we've got loads of uh it's like 14 feet set to audio only to do that you just basically turn there's an option for no video right right gonna be bit more abrasive up here give it a few good jabs and then as before just carefully clean those areas up so we're not going mad mm. plenty of weathering but not removing all of the paint certainly from areas like this where we've got impact craters and so on 
kind of a good idea to add some weather. You'd expect it to be pretty buggered at that point. Just add some water to brush. Okay, a little bit just there. Now obviously, when you're doing this sort of technique on something, you're probably gonna be taking a lot more time over it than this. Like I said, we're going pretty quick fire, just to be sure we can show you guys a couple of different techniques to weather. But I would recommend that you definitely be a little bit more refined than some of what I'm doing now. show you what does happen if you start wiping it with the uh, cleaning equipment it just removes paint so obviously that's another way of damaging your paint in a, a way you've chosen to do so at least okay his arm shoulder We're not going to weather the top of the shoulder because we haven't got the best coverage there. Now oh, let's do his head at the same time this way. So how else can you apply weathering that has a similar kind of finish to this? There's one definite way that normally springs to mind and most people have got loads of the thing they need chilling out at home normally from things like an army case that they've bought who's got any ideas in the chat on what we might be talking about so you may not need to go out and buy chipping mediums and an airbrush although i strongly recommend the hot weather airbrush technique of just a nice cooling mist Foam, absolutely. Uh, when you see these data limited, I imagine it's like bandwidth then, rather than anything else. Right, just at this crease of this guy's elbow pad. Let's get a bit more weathering on there. There you go, he's got a pretty battered shoulder, uh, shoulder, elbow, we just said elbow as well. Just get a little bit in here where there's a little bit of moulded battle damage. There you go. So you could just use foam. You could dip it in some brown paint, get a lot of the excess off. You don't want to necessarily paint it brown, just sort of stipple it with some foam, brown. Now if you're doing that, there's a couple of different ways that you can go about it. The one that I I recommend because I prefer the effect you get at the end is rather than paint the mini with your brown and then maybe go in and highlight it afterwards, I go in with your highlight color on your sponge and then go and paint brown in afterwards. So one side, the other side, by the time we've got some washes on there, darken down some of those recesses, it's going to look pretty good. Just get a load of scratches in around here, attack it with a brush a bit. Now earlier on we were talking about making sure patterns are random. This looks pretty fucking random to me. So the, the alternative method that was uh, suggested for doing stuff like this was salt weathering you'll notice that this gives us just as random a finish without it having so much of a, a set of soft areas where there's maybe salt that's acted more like a stencil uh, and hasn't quite gotten the full coverage you're after perhaps. Salt weathering is awful, says Solway. 
I think it's got its uses, but those uses are limited. If you've got something that's completely flat, like a barricade, and you're painting white, or super light grey, I think it it's probably alright. <laughs> but I'd still just do it this way. also a bit of a mess your tough brush out give him some good stabbings in the head this is the same toothbrush I used to clean my airbrush with so the, the bristles are completely fucked which makes it perfect for doing this kind of thing They're super soft. They splay out in all different bloody directions. That's not, not that on there, it's just some piece of job from where we've rubbed some paint off. Sorry mate, you're getting a chin butt. There you go. One chin butt later. This guy has seen some better days. On this shoulder pad, we've got some really nice moulded battle damage. So let's activate our chipping fluid for all of this area. Let's get all this as well. So again, just spraying with water. Syracuse one. Thank you for that follow and welcome. Uh, it's only used if you hate yourself. Too much clean up, sub parasols with hairspray slash medium, so you do these days. There's no reason to ever use salt. I totally agree with you, but there was someone in the chat that was adamant that salt weather is super good, so I was kind of just like trying for him. <laughs> but I. Th this is the best way to do weathering that's removing a layer chipping fluid is absolutely spot on and you can see how easy and how quick it is right we we'll come back and give some extra attention to this uh, this crack up here in a minute but for now just getting some pretty random scrapes on with the tooth brush and more importantly this methods quite a lot of fun you get to just ruin a paint job on purpose so Go hit with this brush now. The other thing as well with this is that depending on the thickness of your paint that you've put down, what you can end up with is um, an actual 3D effect. So let's say we've done like four or five passes with this, a couple of different highlight colors building up from very dark to very light. By the time we start to ship away up here, where the lightest bit is, you might end up pulling several thicknesses of paint over, which will leave a genuine 3D effect on the model. Uh, so wait, I've not actually done anything with Tamiya paints. I don't, don't own any, I've never used any. Um, I'm partially put off by the fact that I know that you need to use specific thinners and things like that. Uh, and I'm already pretty cavalier with the fact that I airbrush without a, a mask on for the stream and things like that anyway. So, as a result, Tamiya paint is something I've kind of just shied away from. So here, we just scraped off a load of the paint from inside that crack. Just dry this down so you can see it a little bit better.
But yeah, this guy's definitely had better days. Definitely had better days. Try all this down. Right, the next step is going to be getting some gloss varnish on. Uh, seal down all of the chipping fluid that we put on there. Stop that from coming off. Reactivate it. So a nice thick layer on there. Also, by using, we completely missed the back of his shoulder pad. Let's just bash that a little bit till we get some weathery streaks come through. There we are. A bit more down here. Also, by using a gloss varnish, it'll help our oils, which we're going to use in a minute. Get into some of those recesses. Panel line a few bits and pieces nice and quick for us. And then we can start looking at doing things like some dripping grime. Cool, but there you are. Let's zoom out just a touch. There is our very weathered, very quickly statue. So even stopping to explain exactly how we're doing it and why we're doing it and so on, as you see, that took pretty much no time at all to weather. Definitely some of that looks interesting on the battlefield, if nothing else. Right, brush. In there, ready to have this cleaned on the top. Thinner. Uh, and that's because the acrylic resin and crystallized rather than plasticized, let's say, will echo sit on scatter, so it's like nice when you use the water for it's meant really easy, nice to take gray in the one. Ah, fair enough, man. That I didn't know. I've, like I said, I've never used them. Um, and it's something that I've intentionally not used, right? For, uh, like reasons of breathing and, and things like that. <sighs> bottle cap, so the bottle cap gone. Um, lost varnish, that was the next step. Yeah, I'm sure they're, they're perfectly fine to use, but something like that I imagine needs some additional thought put into safety precautions. Uh, and I try not to wear anything like a mask when we're on stream. Just because it interferes with the uh, communication. And certainly I do not want to be wearing a mask tonight. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> Just no. You make some with water? I thought you needed to buy proper, like, actual thinners for Tamiya paints. I feel I may have also been misinformed by people as well as uh, somewhat skeptical of the uh, the, the Tamiya ness Right, need to make sure we hit every part of the model with this. Absolutely have to seal all of that in. Now, could you use matte varnish for this? Yeah, absolutely you could. Nothing wrong with using matte varnish. But because the next step we're going to do is going to be getting some oil paint site to panel line it. Using gloss varnish is going to help to break up the surface tension a little bit. Oh. Uh, okay, okay. Got none of those Mexican wrestling masks. <laughs> WWE passed. I do, mate. I do, and I've worn one so that the hottest day of the year in 2003 was something like 40-ish degrees inside the fucking um, Haven holiday camp that we were working on that day. Inside their club, it was about 46. 46 degrees. It, it, was, it was horrible. And as you can imagine, wearing a luchador mask in that kind of heat is 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 uncomfortable and that's putting it extremely mildly unfortunately the day before that one of the guys that was on tour with Matt 
had had a falling out with the promoter because the promoter was a bellend. He, he genuinely was one of the most dickheadish people I've ever met in my life. Um, he and the promoter had had their, their issues. Matt had decided, this, I'm out, I'm, I'm not working with this guy anymore. And had asked me the previous night to drive him from Blackpool, which is where we were working, to Manchester to meet a mate of his who would give him a lift back to Cheltenham. Manchester to Cheltenham, like that's that's not a a, a a short journey, you know. But that's that was Matt's great plan was well look, I'm fed up with Texas fucking Pete, I'm off. So off Matt went. We spent the hottest day of the year turned up and we're down somebody. I had to lie to the front and say I don't know where he went. He, he said he was going out last night. I assumed he meant for a few beers. He, I didn't see him, I thought he pulled. Now he gets to hear, maybe he pulled a lot. Yeah, who knows? And uh, so yeah, that, that was that was not the most amazing fun in games. But because we were down a person, I not only had to wrestle my match, but I had to wrestle his match as well and pull a double, which meant that I wrestled for about 50 minutes that day in that fucking mask. I then went out and bought some Febreze, thinking that will get rid of the smell. No. No. <laughs> Nothing gets rid of that smell. And what the shit. I've just had an advert pop up on the other screen. Really? Really? Summer's here, is it? You don't say. Fucking bull guard. Once again, let, let's not wait for this to dry. Let's just get on with it. Such a sweaty hand. <laughs> Right, now this isn't curing the varnish, just want to make that very clear. All this is doing is drying its surface and, and getting it to the point where we can work with it semi-immediately. When we did the Nurgle army, the demons at the weekend, when we painted, for those of you that are somehow unaware of this, an entire Nurgle demon army on stream in one weekend. It took 35 hours. 30 five hours to get that guy sorted out but the entire army painted this weekend for that the last thing we did on the saturday night was gloss everything and then go to bed leaving that to cure all night which meant that when we turned up in the morning rather than this still being a little bit loose on the surface in places it was set in place I strongly suggest that everyone works like that and doesn't do this unless you're in a rush, in which case, fuck it, it's fine, do what you need to do. Oils. Let's grab another El Cheapo brush, but this one is actually not a bad one. This is the Army Painter Hobby Highlighting Brush, and the reason I'm using this is because it's a synthetic brush with a really nice tip. And you can use these for oil paints because they're synthetic they won't melt uh, the brush costs about three pounds so it's not you know it's not the cheapest brush ever but it's also not an expensive brush you don't feel too bothered when in two months you've got to buy another one let's grab ourselves a little tin foil dish which i'm sure i've still got a few in the drawer need to buy some more pies we've only got three left from this oh no i've got another pack of them that's fine so uno tip oil dish and then here's one we made earlier whenever i do some oils wow it's actually set that there's one we made slightly too much earlier can we re just rescue that with some spirit Haggis Hunter, what up? It's 
may or may not work. Let's find out. But normally when I do some oil painting, get some balls in that. I've got one, don't you worry. Chunk. When I moved all my paints over to dropper bottles, I bought an airsoft day's worth, I guess, of these horrible things. Right. Whoever wants to run around and be shot by 500 rounds of what? Well, these are something like six to eight mil ball bearings. You've, you've got bigger problems than me, I think, at that stage. But whenever I do some, some work with oils, if there's any left, I try not to just waste it. So, black oil goes in a little black oil pot, so on and so forth. Now this is only oil that's thin to the point where we can use it to do um, line work. So to do recess shades, to do any kind of uh, panel lining, that sort of thing. If you need something thicker, where you'd be doing maybe some more um, recovery intensive oil washing, then I'd just make that up as you go. Like whenever you need it, off your trot. So that looks a little thick. Let's see what we're working with. Yeah. Thin that right down, mop that right up. It's too hot, I'm gonna die, send help. Can't help, Haggis Hunter, too hot. Right, there we go, if we paint that around the rim of our high dish, that flows nicely into all the cracks, as you can see. Stays away from the surface pretty well. We're okay with that. So now we're just gonna get this into a load of our recesses. So on the feet, and you should just be able to touch the crease and have the paint automatically, it's a bit too much on the brush, automatically just flow into it so this makes your panel lining super super quick if that's what you're aiming for if you've got a load of that to do it's also very forgiving because if you accidentally get some on a surface you're not meant to you can just remove it with a little bit of thinner and a nice clean brush or a cotton bud after the fact or something along those sorts of lines oils are super good for things like that Where'd this guy down? It's not standing yet. Uh, did, did you remember? Did you get any of the basin kits containing Rocky Canyon or Arid Earth? I honestly can't remember, mate. Uh, and they're now all boxed up, ready to be shipped. So I'm, I'm not going to go and have a, a goosey. Um, I don't remember Arid Earth at all. Rocky Canyon, I've got some. That's some good stuff. So here we've got this nice bit of molded damage on the model. So we just dropped in a little bit of shade on that. And this is basically what we're gonna do now. We're gonna work up and down the model, just making sure that all of our lines are nicely picked out. Give this guy back some definition because we've just used an airbrush, which meant everywhere we've applied the airbrush, we've applied one value to every single part of the mini underneath that. When we get to these bits, let's just blob a little in there for now, and then just start to, and that failed pretty spectacularly, just sort of tease out some of that. And it doesn't matter that it's pretty rubbish looking for now, because we can go back in and clean that up in a minute. So we'll let that dry a little, and then we just come back in and subtract some of that away. Same for this. 
fill that up. Let that flow down. And then again, we'll come back and just tidy up some of that in a bit. Do I need your address? I believe I have it, mate, but by all means, fire it over on Discord one more time. Uh, I didn't get yours. Oh, shit, there were three. I didn't get them out of reach. Um, I'll message you on Twitch, but yours was one of them, so there's only two others, and one of those was Smithy, and I'm pretty sure I've got his address as well. In fact, yeah, it's probably one of the last things in the chat between me and you is your address, I'd imagine, so. If it's with a few messages, don't worry about it. All right, so quickly lining in all the detail around that hand. Let's get into these creases up here. I'm not fussed about the gold stuff for now. And in here, let's just darken all that down. So now you can see we're getting some real definition brought back into this guy. And it's not taking forever either. Just get another bit of darkness in there. Let's do his face. So dotting around the eyes, the mouth. He's got a really intense brow line big nose, instantly panel line, mm -hmm. happy days right, everyone should have a go at oil washing if just for that, if you do a lot of recess shades, so pin washing, anything along those sorts of lines, get it, there's a pun in there if you think about it hard enough, if you do anything along those kind of channels, Puns are going to get worse. Then this is definitely a technique you can take advantage of. And if you're using airbrush, I'm always saying how you must go back in and bring in your shadows. You definitely, definitely should think about oil washing. Uh, that wasn't a band. That that was some dude making some royalty-free music. But it was seriously good. A lot of the stuff that we've got on here now is some sick, sick stuff. Some of it either sounds like it belongs in a video game, or like this sounds very much like the tune that was in The Boys, um, the series with Carl Urban about the superheroes that were all mental. Uh, I thought that was a great series, by the way. If you haven't seen it, I strongly suggest you watch it. No spoilers in the chat, just in case, right? It's a quality, quality series. And it sounds very much like one of the songs from that. Right, little bits of physical damage in there. Let's just chuck in a few extra bits. Don't forget thought this to tidy up we'll come back and show you how to do that in a minute I'm just gonna let that dry a little more meanwhile let's look after our nuts because it is after all a hot sweaty day I'm gonna do a little bit of streaking on some of these as well Jay what do we need to get to start with oil washing oil based paint clear spirit and some cups yeah, I bought like a hundred of these little tins from um, eBay or something for home baking. Um, so you could just get something like that. You could buy like an oil palette, so like a metal palette, uh, like Marco's got if you wanted to. But to be honest, I wouldn't bother with the expense if you're just starting out. Um, as far as the oil-based paints, go for small tubes. Small tubes. Because, sorry Liam, bigger is not always better. You will not use a large tube of oil in a long time. I do a lot of oil washing now. Uh, admittedly, it's only little bits at a time. We're not oil washing like entire armies or gigantic 
scale model tanks or anything like that. But in almost every commission and on almost every mini I paint, there's something that's gone on with oil paint. And my tubes of black, uh, magenta, and uh, I've got a brown, burnt umber, that's it, look like they're absolutely brand new. So don't buy the super large tubes, you're, you're going to regret that. Alright, done one half of this guy. So loads more definition in here, obviously a load of dirt as well, than we've got on this side. You see the difference, right? Nice bits of focus. No focus. Focus. No focus. Any tips on brands? Mate, I'm kind of married to Windsor & Newton at this stage, like for brushes, for you name it. Um, so I use their stuff and I've got no complaints with it. It's cheap. It's 285 or so I think I paid per little uh, tube of, of oil paint. Yes, I know a load of this is green. That doesn't matter. We're going to rust all this up so you won't see any of it. But for the bits that aren't going to get rust on, let's just chuck this panel liner in while we're playing around with it. Because we may as well. Let's also panel line those before we forget. And that bit. So it's going to help darken down a lot of this to give us a nice basis for some pretty grimy rust in the top. All the rust we're going to use for this, we're going to use with pigments as well. So now those weathering powders that we were using on bases the other day in our stream, well, we're going to show you another use of those on here. Let's do a few bits of streaky grimy oil in here again come back and tidy that later just hit all of these and line around the bottom of them Uh, 10 different 12 mil oil paints for less than a 5 of horizon. Right, there you are then. There you go. They're all going to be much of a muchness as well, to be fair. Right. It's going to be a load of medium, which is normally linseed oil in oil paint, uh, with a load of pigment in a metal tube. That's kind of oil paints in a nutshell, but a metal nutshell with a little screw cap on the end of it. Don't get crazy now. Get some shades up here on his hood. Just get in here and do these bits. We could use a bigger brush for this, let's be honest, but we're kind of past that point right now. Clean that up and remove bits of that in a minute. Uh, yeah. Just going to paint all over the chain links so we can get into all those little recesses there. All the bits around the little birdies, the old Imperial Eagles. All this is now green because we're not going to paint all that silver again. So let's get into those recesses too. See, we're getting there nice and quick now. To be fair, we are being a little bit more sort of cavalier and sloppy with this side. But we just showed you how to go around getting it all nice and smooth on the other one. 
just gonna do a little bit of cleanup when we do our um, streaking grime and stuff we've got obviously clear up to do there so we just tidy up a few other bits and pieces on this side and we'll be absolutely fine side bits, lob a load into these, and then just start with some streaks. So, let's get into this crease as well. Right, benefit of oil paints over regular acrylic washes or paints that you've turned into a wash yourself by just thinning them which is the usually correct way of using a wash to make your own unless you're batch painting in which case just just pick up something with the word wash written on the side you have work time with this we painted these bits on I don't know, 20 odd minutes ago. They, they're not dry, they won't be dry for an age. We can still work with those, we can still change things, we can still move them about, take them back off the model. That's one of the things I like about most about oil paints, it kind of breaks the rules. You know how when you're always told, you just, just add a little of something, just add a little, you can't take it back. Well, with oil paints, you can. Hicko! What up, dude? You can always go back with oil paints. You could literally remove every single trace of oil paint you wanted from the model without removing any of the base paints at this point. Still. It's going to be a lot of work, don't get me wrong, and you maybe question your life and the choices you've made, and certainly by the time you've finished it, your sanity would be strongly suspect. But you can still do it. It's definitely still on the cards. You crazy, crazy fool. It's on the cards. We're not going to do that. I'm just literally slapping this on. We're not even trying to be tidy with this. We're just painting over the flowers, the little petals, to make sure we get into all those recesses. And in a minute, well, in like 20 minutes, we're going to start just making sure that all the front sections of those, where we've got the petal itself, are nice and clean, same as we will do with this bit of text. So just slap that on like so. So we'll still have a nice bright red at the front, we'll still have a very dark shadow for everything else. All the template crosses it's a little bit too much oil in there let's just spread that out a little bit like so and then let's get in up here a lot of load of oil on to those areas we've got our weathering Okie dokie, anywhere that we've missed, we've always got this bit of base to do, but I'm holding it, the mini, by this. So we're going to weather this with a load of powders and uh, rust the living shit out of it. That is probably our oil stage part one done. It looks like it. So, let's clean our brush a little bit. We're going to need those pie dishes back out. Yeah? I'm going to wipe them away. And this time, we, instead of using oil paint and white spirit, we're just going to use white spirit. So let's pop that back out of the way. Pop some white spirits in there. And now we're going to remove some of that oil. So 
So a good way to think about the process we're about to do now is it's a bit like dry brushing in reverse. I mean, it's not really, but it's... Most of you will understand uh, where we're coming from with that in a second. So the reason I say that is because when you dry brush something, you're taking your brush and you're sort of running it back and forth over the model if you're doing it incorrectly. If you're doing it properly, you're just going in one direction. And you're applying paint to just the highest recesses. What we've just done is we've taken that model and we've slapped paint all over it. And now we're going to remove it from just the highest points. I said highest recesses, didn't I? That was dumb. Deepest recesses, highest peaks. So the paint, that the oils that flowed into the recesses will stay in the recesses. We're now going to remove the oil from all of the top parts of that, bringing that back up. So we've got some clean white spirit. So we use our tiny brush. And one of the reasons for that is because where we've got the streaks that we wanted on here, just going to start to clean away some of that oil and tidy it up a little bit to give us better streaks. So keep yourself a little bit of towel nearby, clean the brush out on that after it's picked up some of the darker paint and then just clean it up. So obviously this is what I meant earlier on when I was saying you can't do this with an acrylic brush. You just, sorry, an acrylic uh, product, you can't. Once it's set, it's kind of set unless you're using things like um, isopropyl alcohol perhaps. Um, and at that stage, you're, you're really having to worry about how much paint you're gonna lift up off of the mini. All right, any other areas we went a bit harm? Let's clean a little bit of that. This bit will clean a little, and that's kind of all we want to do on there. See, now you see we've got some streaks that look a little bit more natural. What if though? What if you get here and you clean off too much? Ah, oh, shit! Well, now I bugger it. No, that's where you just grab some more oil paint. But you'll notice on this, we'll naturally separate. And then you just paint in some more. It's a back and forth process. Nothing's ever set with oil paints. Almost literally, in fact, to the meaning of that word. But you can just blob on a load more. Apply that, let it cure for just a little bit. When you move on to another area of the mini, and I'll show you it again so we decided we didn't but just to show you guys we decided we'd taken off too much so we put a load more back on and now we move on so we go back to just our white spirit any areas here that needs a bit of clean yeah this recess the shade there looks pretty dire so let's just clean off a load of the oils around there so we're cleaning off this edge where we'd have a highlight that's allowing the oil that was on there to just drain down into that recess a bit. We'll then flip the model over and do the same the other side to clean up this tide mark a little bit. Keeping that nice and bright. Again, allowing just the oil into that recess. If I move that, the camera might stop having a bit of a shit fit about the fact there's white on the screen. And you can just do this and refine it as much as you want. We're going to do this relatively quickly because it is 11 o'clock, which means we've really only got about 15 minutes of actual work time. And I want to get the powders out. And just show you guys a little bit of weathering some silver super, super fast. We're going to weather all of this back section. So all the clockwork crap that he's got on him that we haven't even bothered to repaint after the green overspray got on there. I'm gonna show you how to just make that look nicely rusty very, very easily. 
which means I am going to have to wear a mask because I will be using the powders and they set my allergies off so I am going to sweat off the face very much there we are. so there's that streak of grime that we've got on there this one it looks like it's blown out a bit on camera let's change the brightness There you go, go back up. Now you can see the oil's working a little bit better. Go back to the front where we were working earlier on, on our streaks. Those are nice and dark again. They've had time to just about dry. So a little bit of white spirit on the brush. And then just clean off the bits we don't want. Wipe the brush on your paper towel. Go back. And then again, just thin out. Move off street. Isn't that simple? Cake Fisk, what up? There you are. So now we've got some streaking, it looks a bit better let's come back here clean the bottom of that off just a touch more so it's nice and bright contrast a little bit better happy days hiding from the heat I mean dude it, it, what I was going to do tonight was work on the Necrons and do some OSL that didn't happen then I thought, all right, cool, I'll convert up those Demon Princes. We'll do a, a, a stream where we don't paint. We'll do a stream where we do conversions, because we haven't done that ever. Um, and I realized that the bits I was going to use were um, sort of seconds from my housemate. And then they're not going to work, because he's taken all the hands. Uh, now to be fair, he just gave me the kit ages back because I was going to do a Chaos Army. Look, if you need some bits for spawn or, or like some conversion bits for you know whatever else, here you are. Um, and we're going to do them now as a Demon Prince, but we're missing the hands. Is we're back to the drawing board on. <laughs> Right, there we go. That's most of that cleaned away. We've got a nice recess with our streaks. Let's check out anything right here. So when we got to the hand and the shield, obviously we're being super, super quick with it. There's nothing really to clean up around the face area. Nothing really to clean up around here, but on the hand, we do just want to carefully remove any oils from the surface of his fingers. Keeping those nice and bright against the red. Drones, we're going to use Plague Drones, yeah. So you're making Demon Dawn? No, 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 no. We're going to do... Um, we're using the Storm Vermin... Not Storm Vermin. They're Storm something. Rat Ogres with guns on hands. I don't know what they're called. It's not Storm Surge. That's a tiny thing. But speaking of Tau... Today I had a friend of mine who plays Tau message me full of glee and go, see, see, I told you we'd get Overwatch for free. Ra 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 ra. And he was he was so happy about that. Like absolutely buzzing his tits off. Super happy. Until I sent him the bit that he hadn't read, which was the Models with the fly can't fall back from combat and shoot anymore. And then he was unhappy. He, he was... He was slightly more salty than when they took away his beloved Overwatch. I don't care, that'll teach you for being a tie player. That, that's all I've got for you. <laughs> tie players are indeed never happy. Don't look at my Tau army in the background. 
Right, just cleaning off some of this oil from the top of his shoulder, just so we've got a nice bright patch right here. Next to our darker patch, where we've got our, our battle damage. We'll leave a little of this going on anyway, just so we've got a nice little shade against the, um, the recess there. And we've just got his head to do for the cloak, and then it's time to grab out some hiders. So, weathering pigments, what are they? They're paint minus the medium. That, that's it. That, if you make them wet, you'll have paint. They're dehydrated paint. Perhaps. You would much rather keep the fly rule no watch. Yes, I'll bet you would. I'll bet you would. Uh, it was. It's basically GWN. Tag players, we've heard you were very salty uh, because we removed your Overwatch. And the tag community at large went, yeah, man, fuck right you did. You better sort us out. You know, you better sort us out because we're not happy. And GWN. Hold my beer. <laughs> Fucking went in. Wait. <laughs> uh. You got pwned by ogres again. Uh, is this Sigma? Tag it free doesn't encourage any play styles. Look, mate. But the Tau Army that I'm writing is not your traditional Tau Army. Uh, yes, there will be three Riptides, because I fucking love Riptides. That's not the competitive choice right now. But I love Riptides. Giant robots, that's why I want to play Tau, is, is big robots. Although I begrudge paying 160 quid for a Storm Surge to buy the extra kit you need to make it not look so dirty. So we probably won't be getting one of those. But it's three Riptides, four Commanders, because we go going Fast Light Enclaves. Which means my Overwatch still hits you on sixes, not fives. So, as a result, my Overwatch is nowhere near as good, so I'm not relying on it as a player. I'll give you some charges that you don't want to do every now and again, just so I can feed the greater good on you. But... That, that's it. I'm not going to leave myself hanging out on the front lines begging you to charge me. Uh, okay, it is eight minutes past. By the time we clean up this shield, we're not going to get time to do weathering. So what we'll do is we'll go into the whip a little earlier than normal. And then we'll close out the stream because I need a shower before bed. And I've got to shape my dough into bread loaves because we still need to make dough this week. I still need to make bread this week. Um, so I've got that to do as well. So if you want to be shown in the whip, if you want to see your models on stream, exclamation point Discord in the chat, get a link over there, go to the work in progress gallery once you've made it, upload some pictures of your work. Three pictures ideally being the maximum. But we can spend some time doing the whip because most of our whips recently have been relatively hurried, especially the ones from the weekend where we were trying to rush through it because we were trying to get the whip done on things like lunch breaks from painting those demons. Uh, tap paint and play starts is still involved shooting from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> Who does not love massive robots? My opponents. That's, that's it. I, I did once have somebody flat out call me a bastard for bringing just Imperial Knights. I got to the table and I was waiting for my opponent and this, this dude turned up, this ginger kid. He looked at me and went, is that your army? I went, yeah. He went, oh, they look great. You're a bastard. Sorry. I'm like, fucking Imperial Knights. Just Imperial Knights, you cheesy, cheesy bastard. Sorry, mate. If, if you think my army's cheesy, you've 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 got problems. You went. It is cheesy. I've got nothing but custodes, and I'm playing you. Uh, okay, that, that. This is going to be a great game, isn't it? This was game four 
of a four game day as well. Two thousand points. This this guy had not slept very well. And basically was passed out on his side of the table. It was it was it was not fun for either one of us, not really. Especially when I had to ask him three times to make his saves every every time. <laughs> so. But I can still operate when we've been playing for that long. You know, I've got no issues with that, which is why I'm super looking forward to the Alliance Open Super Major in November. Can't wait for that. Oh, it's going to be so good. Eight games of 40k in three days. Yes. Yes. Let the salt flow through you, my brothers. Whew. Absolutely. Can you drop a night list? Can you kill two knights a turn? If the answer is no, if you face one of those lists, you're going to lose. If you're happy with that, cool. If you're thinking, well, it's all right, I can outplay knights because I'll play the mission. <laughs> I hope you're not playing me. <laughs> my, my usual advice to people is to tell them to play the mission. And they, they play the mission really, really hard and forget that I can play the mission too. <laughs> like, if you haven't shot my knights, so you're not in a position to get good killing strikes on them, well then, you're not going to get me off the objective I'm stood on, are you? You're not going to stop me scoring engineers with a halver in, because fuck it, why not? Right. While we just finish this up, quick bit of promoting. We have got the Indominus launch coming soon. Probably the weekend of the 25th yeah, of July. Probably, probably that weekend. Noise created. Thank you for the follow. Have I recovered from the marathon? Mate, I'd recovered by Tuesday, to be honest, but I just wanted to chill out for the evening. I didn't want to paint anything, so we just took the night off. Chilled out, had an early night. It was nice. Um, if I was honest, I kind of recovered by Monday. A couple of hours kit, we were all right to go. Um, the new launch kit is coming out, like I said, probably around the weekend of the 25th. So make sure you've got nothing in your diary. Because we're going to buy, ideally, several of those sets. We're going to be doing some giveaways. One giveaway is just for being a subscriber on YouTube. So if you're not already, estimation point YouTube, head on over there, hit the subscribe button, You'll get access to every single Twitch stream that we do. All of our streams will be uploaded to YouTube, usually immediately after the stream. So you've got a complete video library. Omar, sup? Thank you very much, man. I really appreciate that. Cheers for the sub. So if you think, oh, damn, I want to see how Jay did weathering or I want to see Jay spraying his mohawk yellow they will be on YouTube forever so you see exactly how we've done this very easy very quick technique which at some point we'll finish off get all the weathering powders out hit all this lot painting some gold trim and so on weather some of that as well get some verdigris being painted on perhaps so all of those tutorials will be on YouTube. Go check out that. That will be able to give you a chance to win a complete Indominus box. But also on that weekend, we're going to be giving away two painted minis. You guys, over the last couple of weeks, have chosen that the minis we paint will be the Judicia and the Scorpeth Lord from a Necron set. Now we need to decide on a colour scheme. So, exclamation point, Judy with an I. Oh yes, Judy. Oh yes. And exclamation point, score. S-K-O-R. Go and vote on which colour schemes you would like to see 
us paint either of these to win. You can make multiple choices. The one with the most votes is going to be the winner. That's what we're going to paint them as. There's 13 different chapters and there's 13 different dynasties to choose from. So pick the ones that you think will be cool. When we do that stream, we're going to be raffling off both of these two miniatures. So you'll be able to buy tickets. You know you're going to do Hazard Stripes. Notice how none of those chapters have Hazard Stripes in any part of what they uh, they are or what they do. We'll be raffling them off. You're going to buy tickets throughout the weekend. Now the winner, the first name we draw for the raffle, will win their choice of the painted model and will win the rest of the faction that comes in that box brand new on sprue. So you'll get your Judicia, or you'll get your Scorpeth Lord fully painted, and then you'll get a load of the other plastic crack completely free. So that's awesome. That's going to be a great prize. The second place winner gets the other one, and all the other plastic shit as well. So loads to choose from. So go and vote for which colour scheme you want painted. We'll leave that running for a couple of weeks, and then we'll do another vote, one vote, rather than one each faction for what kind of base you want to have done. So you've got all of that. Ugh. Ugh, sweaty love glove. That's horrible. That's so, so horrible. Ugh. Ugh. We've also got, coming up on Tuesday night, so two streams away, our normal £50 hobby voucher contest, so estimation point win for that, and the mini painted by me to be given away as well. Currently, you know about two of the choices. You've got Ragnar Blackmane Primaris Edition, and you've got the Abominant, the Genesis of the Cult Man with the Power Sledgehammer. What's not to love about that? There's also the Mystery Prize, which is in this box. In here is the third choice. Could be anything, right? There's plenty of room in this box. You could fit lots of different stuff there in sub-assemblies. You could fit maybe some full assembled minis in there. And I hear it rattle. What's in the box? Let's find out, shall we? Get out. <laughs> Even the moth got super fucking excited about that. So, those are the three prizes that are up for grabs. One of them, you have no idea what it is. There could be a load of junk sprues in there and a single ripper. Not saying that that's what I've done. Because it might be a grot instead. Might be some scenery. It might be a limited edition mini. Could be anything in that box. Could be a good prize. Could be a shit prize. Could be a mediocre prize. But either way, I'll paint it and send it to you. Right. Let's go check out the whip. See what we've got in there this evening. That Discord button. SMH point Discord in the chat if you haven't already. Get yourself a link. So what came in during the stream? The first one during the stream was Sons of Rolo. Painting itself some Space Wolves. Got the doggos on deck. We saw the hammers over the weekend. Did some really nice blending work on those. I think this unit is pretty sick. There is one very, very strong piece of criticism that I have for you, which is that the base rims are not black. They need to be, man. They need to be. It will snap those models into focus. Look at the dude in the middle. You look at the mini. Look at the rest of them. You can't help but look at the base. Greta! Thank you for that sub. Much appreciated. McPherson says, made a box as your old Citadel pots after the paint has been transferred to dropper bottles. Still counts as plastic GW stuff. I did say a mini. It 
could still be a scenic base. That's about as like vague from like mini as I'm willing to go. Could just just be a scenic base. Don't know. Don't know. He's a very cool man. Get them base rooms done. Got to do those base rooms. Even GW are finally on the black base room train now. About time. Why why did they ever go brown? But I love them, dude. Great work. Love how bright the hammers are. Epic stuff. Spectre Wolf. Painting fabulous Bill. That's some aggressive, glossy wash you've got on that coat, man. The new Elf's box is brown bases. Dude, the new Elf's box might be brown bases. Look at all the new 40k stuff. All on black bases. Then you've got a model of brown base rim in your slideshow, right? Uh, trying to remember which one it is. I don't remember doing anything with a brown base rim. Oh, the weird boy, that's it. Yeah, that's because all of Jake's minis have got fucking brown base rims. Uh... So yeah, look, I, I don't care, man. On camera, they show up black. It's close enough. So, but it's a step in the right direction. Give it a little more time, then embrace it fully. Got his backpack on, the uh, Shuriken. Nice, man. Very cool. He's a cool looking model. You could do with a few more details being picked out on the face. So, get a wash, thin it a lot, or make your own wash. And then just get into the recesses. So take your time, just draw in around things like the eyebrow underneath here around the nose, in the, in the mouth, little wrinkles he's got in his forehead, all that sort of stuff, because the detail doesn't quite come through. How much is the Indominus starter box going to be? I have a strong suspicion, £120. Might have been potentially told that. Uh, it will be... Pre-orders up on the 11th for a two-week pre-order. So there you go. And that, that competition, everyone keeps going back to that. That competition needs to be so far out of people's heads when it comes to this. Everyone's saying, oh, it's not vague. You know, it's, it's, it's clearly got to be this. Like, it might be that. But I tell you the price is something they're not going to tell you about. Everyone says, Oh yeah, but they put out the Indominus box, so it must be that. What about a ninth starter set? Could be that. Who knows? But I'm telling you, probably 120. Probably. Right, Rocky. I swear it's just my camera. His face isn't that busted in person. Let's have a look at the face. Uh, um, he reminds me of an actor, and I can't quite work out who, but clearly someone with a... Um, Okay, same deal as Spectre Wolf. You have no real definition to that face. It's like a little like the Neeson. Yeah, maybe. So you can't really see any of it. It, it blurs into the background. Look at my face. I mean, you know, at your own risk. Even with the harsh lighting we're here, we've got now, you can see 
shadows around like the eyebrow line underneath the eyes under here where like the pads of my cheeks and stuff finish you know you've got those darker spots that are easily definable but this this guy doesn't have them all right so you need to get into those really thin creases in his skin and you need to darken those down which will allow everything else to look a bit brighter and will have that balance so there you go that's that's the main takeaway here other than that mate what's going on with his cloak I'm guessing that's just where you've sort of sketched out some detail um, some of the washes that you've put on his armor have pulled too much as well so if you look at his backpack the vent he's got there there's a big thick tide marks all around those um, nuts you need to go in and highlight that back out so Leslie Nielsen yes 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 so some things to work on for sure man faces are tough faces are tough we should probably do a stream where we just paint some faces at some point actually that would be a really good stream to do root through the bits box find some heads just paint faces right that's on theirs done the stripes need to do some highlights on them though yes you do yes you do the yellow is looking good but do you see where it's gone ever so slightly grayish at the end the only fix I know to that, Gary Boosie. Whew. The only fix I know to that is to get some orange in there and just up the contrast that way. That's what I do on my nights. But I like it, man. It's super clean. Super, super clean. probably do with a little bit of some dark tone or a black oil wash or something just around the rim of that steel as well just to really give it some separation from the rest of the, the dozer blade as long as the silver bit at the bottom but it's nice man it's very nice Sith who's now working on Robert I guess Bobby G Next Primark up in the series. He's got Gladius. He's got what could very well be the Hand of Dominion. Ultramarine symbols everywhere. So yeah, I'm going to call it Bobby G. Nice. I've never been sold on their sideways mohawks. I, I don't... I don't support this kind of mohawk. It, Back to front, only Mohawk. Nice mini. Oh, here we go. This is him next to Bobby with a different head. And this time he might be the Emperor. In fact, that's just a small version of the one behind it, which is fucking gargantuan, as you can see. Madeth, I, I know, I, I totally understand the, the history of it, I get that. My point was just Mohawk. That's it. Just Mohawk. How it like a paintbrush? That's also fine in this direction. It's good for doing ceilings, you just kind of, you know. Nice, Sith. Getting through these, man. Is the line finished? Right, that still says oops. I'm not sure why oops. These are good, man. I really love your color scheme for these. The armor's a really good canvas for everything else. So. I love him, mate. Super, super, super cool. And then, some of the rotor. Final two is all done, base coated. Some, some in rotor 
I'm happy without the Terminators. What? So i have ended up, what do you think I need to work on the most at the moment? Cheers. Ah, oh, right, gotcha. Cool. And yes, these have now had the black bass drop. Like this. Uh, so faces, again, kind of lack some definition. In fact, you could do with just getting some recess shades in all of that armor. Um, look at the gray that's sort of surrounding him underneath his, his arms and stuff like that. It's all still the same bright color gray that you've got everywhere else. Uh, if you look at his outstretched arm that's holding the hammer in around the elbow where there's a lot of detail there it's, it's very flat so you just need to get in there get some shades going on by doing that it makes everything else look brighter but it also just snaps that detail into focus you saw it tonight on this crappy looking statue very easy to do especially with oils in fact here's a better example Look at the hand he's got holding the shield. All right. What you should see from this distance in the photo is every single finger picked out. What you actually see is, is like a grey shape that's, that's got an indent into it every now and again. So you just get in there, line it out, get the recess shade, maybe put a highlight on top as well if you're feeling up to it. Fingers are tough, a very small area to get your highlights in on, but that's that's where I would suggest you focus your attention. Get into those recesses, panel line stuff. You don't have to do it black, you can do dark greys, whatever you want. You just snap those details in. Look at this dude. He needs to work very, very strongly on the fact that he's got a top knot. Biggest area to focus on there is avoid the top knot. And these ginger. <laughs> like, that's a double whammy. At least it's not a man bun. You know. Uh, this guy looks good. Again, you can get a little bit more in your recess shade. So this, this time, if we look at the gold and the red on the front of the shield, for the red, you can use a purple. Thin that down, and then you can get inside the recess there. For the gold, purple works really well. I, I wash almost all of my good guy golds with purple and then a flesh tone afterwards because it gives that really nice antique look to things. But with this, you could just get a bit more purple and put it into those uh, recesses. You could go with a warm chestnut kind of flesh wash kind of color. That would work too. And if we look in the last pick, there's the gang all together. Nice. They look great. They do look great. Also, I'm loving the background. I never got on with a PSD4 and it just tasted like nothing. Esplendido's tasty, but God, they need some time. Very nice, mate. Very nice. I started to use cigar boxes for all of my hobby stuff now. I've got a small stash of them that we're trying to take everything out of this drawer and box up in there. Very cool though, dude. Good doggos. Uh, right, Rev. Oh, damn. So Rev still going with that super, super bright Death Guard. I've got to admit, mate, when I saw this guy the other day, I was like, oh, damn, he's really muted these, and I really liked his Pox Walkers. Uh, he did not disappoint, sir. He did not disappoint. Loving this. Um, you could make the rust on his axe slightly brighter in places. So maybe get some orange and just get a few little lines in there. Because that, that can't compete. It doesn't hold up to the strength and vibrancy of that bright green armor. It gets lost because your eye is constantly drawn to that green. So you need something to just move it back over. The green will still hold your attention, even with that, simply because there's so much of it. It's the dominant color. 
So if you just get some slightly brighter oranges into a few of the bits of rust on his axe, not all of it, just a couple of little bits here and there, you'll look at the mini, we go straight to the green, but rather than being held there, you'll then move across a little bit and look at the actual, sending your audience on a little bit of a voyage around the mini. Look at the butt shot. That is a sick, sick cape. That, that's great. That is great. I love the bright pink you've gone for there at the bottom. Awesome stuff, dude. Absolutely awesome stuff. See, on here, on the back, I wouldn't touch the rust at all. Because you, you're you're looking all up and down the model. What can I tell you about your two-month progress, mate? I wish my progress in two months was as good as yours. Like, you're smashing it. Gypsy Jan, thank you for that follow and welcome. Oh, next up, Divas and Nurgle. Already getting flashbacks at that. We're just going to skip over it. It's a good army. Can't wait to give it a go on the game. Crown Blade, couple of schemes. So we've got blue, silver with a, a gold little goatee. I like his little grey touch rugby towel that he's wearing. That looks nice. And then what's the other one? Purple. Hmm. I think I prefer the purple one, just because there's a little bit more going on with it. So the blue one is is very predominantly blue. That's, that's the, the main overriding sense of what you get here. Because you've used grey metals as well, so you've got that kind of steel, and it's, it's all shares a little bit of blue. Whereas the purple one doesn't. I think I prefer the purple one. So if you're trying to work out which one to do, I, I would go purple. They're good though, man. I'm liking them. Fish, finishing some Nurgly spawn. These are the ones from the uh, Blackstone Fortress. Um, Warhammer Quest box, not Blackstone Fortress. Oh. Sorry about the yawning. It, this normally happens when we get to this point in the whip. My brain's just like, you can go to sleep now, Jay. It just shuts down a little bit. Uh, again, contrast. So get into the axe, get some washes going on just in those recesses, maybe do some rust and so on. Uh, some of the purple you could get a little bit darker in places, a little bit lighter in places. And definitely that Blanca style haircut, that needs to get put up. That that needs like some electric highlights. They're from Road that's it, yeah. Warhammer Crest, Road Trader thing, whatever it was, the Inquisitor stuff on the ship. But shot. That's an unattractive butt shot. It's, it's, it's not good, fish. It's, it's not good. We're moving off from that one. Voodoo Yaz, he still needs a lot of work, he says. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a little bit here and there, mate. Um, plenty of highlights by the looks of it. The white needs a little bit more shadow. And obviously you need a base. But you need the last one anyway. I would definitely make sure you do the eyes a little bit more vibrant because, and it might just be the photo because obviously white makes things a little bit difficult to uh, photograph as we've still seen with this camera setup. Um, but they're lost in there. So. It looks tight though, man. There's Sayek. Whip, PVCs, so to do all the metal bits, like in the kill the spikes and cannon. They look sick. They look sick. Love it, mate. Super, super grimy. Very, very matte. Loads of rust all over. These are awesome. Super awesome. I 
These are going to be good in ninth as well, man. Although I'm still not sold on the whole entropy cannon thing. I still just go to Plague Spurs. The enamel is killing your brain. I do. I, I can totally understand that. This is why I work with oils. Enamels is a little bit... A little bit scary for me right now. Haven't haven't played with that at all. But it works, that dude. It totally works. Yeah, place bits are great, man. Especially if you're souping in some Nurgle Demons. Get that um, Herald, plus one strength. You become strength eight then normally, which is solid. These are Sayak. Out here in the chat. You're doing enamel bits on those, so. Fair play to him, man. They are good. They are good. Very nice, champ. Right. This is what we did this evening. We painted and weathered and battered a statue. Once it's been matted down, it's going to look much, much nicer. But we need to do all of this with some weathering powders at some point. Probably do that in a stream coming soon. We'll get some gold trim going on. Show to do some verdigree. We'll do some rusting effects and stuff like that on the sword but as an easy way to get a couple of different weathering techniques down we did some chipping effects which i think work really well we did some streaking grime with oil paints which again i think works really really well so a couple of things for you guys to practice on perhaps in your spare time also it's one of the only things i can actually do tonight and paint because paint dries on the brush right now which is fun let's go see who's still on twitch See if anyone actually managed to get some painting done. And I think, I think we'll go there. Because why not? I love this dude. And he's painting. He's also doing scenery. So you keep the scenery train going. You're gonna raid Glorious Badger. Then I'm gonna have to make some bread so I can put it in the proving in the fridge all night. And then I desperately, desperately need a shower. So thanks for watching, everyone. Peace out. We will see you on Sunday, live at 9 o'clock. Have fun. I heard the raid, by the way. I'm not. I'm not ignoring it. I was just trying to find this. Um, thank you very much for the raid, Rohawk. How the devil are you? Good evening. Forty. A hey, lot of that going around. How are you doing? Well, I'm groovy. How are you? How are you? Thank you so much for the raid. How was your stream? Melon, thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely meal. I will see you later, alligator, and I will let you know. So yes, um, sorry, folks. We were just going through a uh, thing with just doing. Um, <coughs> that's like, hello. It's a bit warm in here tonight. Tell me about it. I've got the door open. It's hot in here. Outside, it's this computer. I've had to turn one computer off. We're slumming it over here. Um, we've got the lights and everything going. It's melting me. Voodoo, thank you so much. Welcome to the force. Well, you know, I I don't feel a day over. I was going to say thirty nine. I don't really feel any older. I feel slight. My neck hurt a few minutes ago. That hurt. I think that was a new one. Um. What was I doing? I was trying to. 